Hey everybody, this is Dr. Day and welcome to this installment of the Tour of Consciousness. What a great pleasure it is to be with you from my home in Houston! Uh, yeah, I used to travel three and a half weeks out of most months and now not so much. Thank you, Corona, for the long, long time in my beautiful home. <laughs> Boy, I don't know about you, but for me, the world is continuing to change rather dynamically and dramatically. And as this thing goes on and on and on, it can seem a little difficult to stay the course of possibilities if you don't have the tools to create more possibilities. So I'm going to have this as a little bit of an access consciousness refresher, kids. Uh, a lot of you have been following me for a long time on the Tour of Consciousness. Thank you very much, by the way. And thank you for sending your friends along so they can get some tools also as my gift. Because there are a few things that make me happier than sharing tools with you that make you happier. Because we all love, and live, love, maybe love, and live on this beautiful planet together. And uh, what an amazing gift it is to see people have the tools they need to weather any sort of situation. So, here we go. Um, so, what it, this sort of reminds me of, I've, I've, one of the things that I've been looking at lately is we have these tools in Access Consciousness that we share with people at the very beginning. Things like asking questions, uh, the tool of 98% of your thoughts, feelings, and emotions are things you pick up from other people, and the way to get rid of them, which is who does this belong to. Um, the idea of being an interesting point of view. Oh, you can see my hands. I'm like Italian. I'm like an Italian in Houston. Oh my God, how does it get any better than that? Oh, that's another one of those tools, one of those other questions you can ask. In fact, a lot of our tools are in the form of questions because a question always opens up another doorway of possibility. One of the other tools, the choice to choose to be interesting point of view. And um, if we get our shit together, our stuff together, I guess I could say um, the S word. Uh, we'll put some links to those videos down below also. And I created an entire landing page for people um, so they can go there and, and get these tools if they're new to access too. Um, we'll put the link to that in, uh, in the YouTube description and also um, wherever you're seeing this and also if you get it via email. So blah, 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 blah. But one of the things this reminds me of, I've been, um, you know, living on the planet as this pandemic continues and as people, you know, can't travel the way they used to and do the things that they're used to doing and um, realizing that we're going to have a totally different world as we go forth into the future, realizing there are a lot of people going into yuck, but that for me, I'm actually looking forward to a dynamically glorious future. Now, the meaning of glory is exuberant expression and abundance. And what I see is the world changing in ways many of us have actually desired it to. Um, and let's face it, if we were truly going to change things really fast, we needed a shakeup. Well, guess what, kids? We got a shakeup. So um, a shakeup like the world has never seen before kind of shakeup. And not only that, so many of the things about whatever goes on with Corona, you know, there's all kinds of people having all these things that they're saying about it being easy to change and just all kinds of different things. And um, so it's kind of interesting that a lot of the lies are also showing up. Well, that's cool too. How do you navigate this? Well, um, and I know, you know, I've made so many videos on this. How do you navigate this? But I was just thinking this morning that what the world is going through with Corona right now, not, not exactly, but in some way, the stress that a lot of people have and the, the fear of future and all that sort of stuff reminds me so much of what my life was like before Access Consciousness. And if you don't know, I came across Access Consciousness 20 years ago when I was at a place where I was truly planning on ending my life. And so what happened for me was I started actually using the tools not even necessarily thinking they would work or, or knowing they would work. I didn't know they would work at that point. And I figured, you know what, I'll give it one last shot. I'll try this stuff and see if it actually works. Well, I'm here 20 years later, happier than I've ever been before. So I want you to know that's a possibility because one of the other things is most of the people out there aren't saying, hey, I'm happy. 
I'm actually navigating this great and I'm creating a life because, well, the reason I wouldn't want to say it is because I wouldn't want people to feel bad if they're not. And then, you know, I wouldn't want to sound like an asshole, except maybe I am an asshole, who cares? Um, I guess we all can be assholes sometimes, right? Yeah, and if we can acknowledge it, our lives get so much easier. And then I realized, what am I doing? And what are the people that have been doing access for a while that are actually using this stuff doing that's different than what everybody else is doing? Well, number one, we haven't, okay, so um, let me, I know it's already a long video and I've, I've talked about tools, but I haven't given you any. But part of what I wanted to do is get together with you and just share a different space. Just wanted to say, hey, I'm somebody who's doing well and thriving. And are there hiccups? Hell yeah! But I'm not letting the hiccups overwhelm me. Instead, I'm going, okay, how do we change this? And so this, and so that's part of what I wanted to do is present to you different energy and say, also, if you happen to be happy at times during this, or maybe during all of it, that's okay. You're not wrong. <gasps> Whew, isn't that nice to know? So um, now that we got that out of the way, you're not wrong. And um, in fact, you may be this amazing gift with happiness, this amazing gift with knowing there are possibilities, this amazing gift with not feeling like you're buried by everything going on in the world. For everybody out there that's like you, pardon me, I have an itch. Oh, that was a good one. Oh, I, oh. You know how it is, like after the itch goes, you still like just for a few moments, it feels so good to scratch it anyway. <gasps> that was me right now. So you may be an amazing gift. In fact, you are an amazing gift to the other people that want to know there's a different possibility. So they don't have to feel like they're stuck in, in yuck and what the f... So, um, and I've got a lot of sort of newer things that are coming out right now to do my best to engage people to let them know something different is possible. Okay, so um, I'm just gonna go through a really quick refresher for you. And we've got, I've got playlists on most of these things on YouTube. And uh, I've done tons of Facebook Lives. You can find those on my page, facebook.com forward slash Dane here or forward slash Dr. Dane here. That's probably even the better one. Um, so we've got tons of things that are these free resources. Please seek them out, especially if you're going through stress, if you're going through trauma, drama, just go, hey, what's gonna help me the most? And go look, and then whatever you just sort of, without thinking about it, whatever your eyes focus on, or whatever you go, ooh, that might be fun, watch it. Because more often than not, it will contribute pretty dynamically. Because um, it's kind of like if somebody w was like wanting you to run a race, and you know you're fully capable of running and you're actually pretty good at it, but then they give you these shoes that are like this big and you know, with bricks on them and you feel like, I know I should be able to run, but I can't. Well, what the tools of access do is it's basically they let you run the way you actually always could. There's nothing you don't know in that. Well, there may be a lot of things you don't know or haven't thought about, but it's nothing that's not true for you. It's just a way to get to what is actually true. So a quick refresher. Ask questions. This is one of the biggest things you can do. So instead of coming to conclusion, let's say you wake up and feel like, ah, like the, you know, the south end of a northbound elephant is sitting on your head when you wake up in the morning. Instead of going, oh my God, I'm so depressed, I'm so unhappy. Go, who does this belong to? Is this actually mine or am I extremely aware? Because one of the things that happens when you're in your house and when you're only around a few people, what you do is you stick your energetic feelers out further to try to have a sense of connection with people that you used to think you had or used to have whatever by being around them physically. And so now you reach out even more energetically than you ever have. Whoa, that could be really friggin' intense sometimes if you're reaching out around 8 billion people that are going, ah, okay, so that's one. Um, which is a question. Rather than coming to the conclusion that it's yours, ask a question. Now, it may still be yours, but you're not going to know that until you ask the question, okay? And you got to ask the question. I've said to some people, you know, I'll be in a class facilitating them and they'll give me their thing, their shtick, their story, their shtick, their story, their story with a shtick in it, or they give me their story and then I want to hit them with a shtick. Just kidding. I wouldn't hit them with a shtick. I would think about it sometimes, but that's just between us. Don't tell them that. Anyway, so they tell me their story and I go, okay, so is that actually yours? And they go, well, I know everything doesn't belong to me. I've been in access long enough. I'm like, uh-uh, that's not the way it works. Knowing that 98% of your thoughts, feelings, and emotions don't belong to you does not help you in the moment where you're buying that it belongs to you. Asking the question and then being with it, seeing if it lightens up at all 
is how you change it. Got a whole YouTube playlist on who does this belong to. Go check that out, okay? So asking questions is this amazing gift. And um, so one of the other things that can happen is if you start noticing that you're getting stressed out or that you feel like, okay, um, things are, because one of the big stresses people have is financial, right? <clears throat> and a lot of the financial stuff, once again, you need to start with, is this mine? Who does this belong to? In fact, I would get the, who does this belong to app if I were you, use it for three days and see what it changes. It's free, our gift to you, because we'd like you to not have to carry around other people's shit all day. Trust me, I would like that for you because I know what it was like when I was carrying around other people's shit all day and it's not fun to carry other people's shit. In fact, it's not even fun to carry your own shit. So let's find a way to get rid of your shit too and their shit and then you'll be shit free and then you could smell like roses. Everything that brought up. Right and wrong, good and bad, bot and fuck, all nine shirts, boys and beyonds. So what you want to do is you want to ask what else is possible here? What will it take to change this? And what do I know that I'm not acknowledging that would allow me to change this. Okay, three really simple questions. What else is possible? What would it take to change this? What do I know <clears throat> that I'm not acknowledging that would allow me to change this? Because here's the thing, guys. Guaranteed, there is something that you know in your world that will change pretty much everything that's going on for you that you're just not acknowledging. If you acknowledge it, you'll have that awareness and then you can navigate the world differently and may more funly. Yeah, navigate the world more funly. That sounds more funly than not funly. Okay, let's do that. One of the other things is what's right about this I'm not getting, which may seem really difficult to see. Ask it, you may not get an answer, but ask and then see what shows up. And also what's right about me I'm not getting. Both of these can be really extremely darn friggin' helpful, okay? What's right about this I'm not getting, what's right about me I'm not getting. Not just about the whole corona thing, but about everything, because would you really create a life that wasn't actually right for you? I know a lot of us sort of feel like we have, but what if you're not wrong? What if you're not that stupid? What if you're not that unaware? What if you just haven't been able to see what's right about it that keeps you from getting the gift of it, that keeps you from having gratitude, that keeps you from enjoying your life? Now that I mentioned gratitude, one of the other things I highly suggest is write down a list of a thousand things you're grateful for. I know you go, a thousand? I don't even think I can count that high. Don't worry, if you put it as a note on your phone and have it as a numbered list, it will count for you. Huh? You're welcome. Talk about ease, joy, and glory, baby. Okay, a thousand things you're grateful for. I know it sounds really big, and it actually is, but what I'd like you to do is, you know, plan on being done by the time Corona's over and we can all travel again. How about that? Um, just start. Today, write down 10 and keep adding to that list. In fact, there's a way you can um, post notes in your phone and pin them to the top. You figure that out. I don't have the technological know-how. I just know that you can do this. I've got a couple that way, but I don't know how to tell you to do it. Okay. Um, and because the more you have that sense and that space of gratitude in your world, the lighter everything gets. It's really a beautiful space from which to live. Could you imagine if by some miracle, somebody could, you know, Dumbledore you, Harry Potter you with the magic wand or whatever, or the, you know, the Dane wiggly fingers or whatever it takes, okay? And you could actually start to have a sense of gratitude. Not just start, but that you could live with a sense of gratitude. Gary and I just did a class on the creation of wealth and gratitude is one of the elements of wealth. Being truly grateful for your life is one of the elements that brings wealth to you and that is wealth. And by the way, wealth isn't money um, like most people think it is. It's actually how you live. It's the sense of wealth with being able to receive the beauty, the gifts of everything in your life, everything around you, everything going on in the world and um, navigate it from a totally different space. Anyway, I just wanted to bring that up because it was one of the wonderful tidbits from this really cool class that we just did. Um, and then the other thing you wanna do, anytime you have anything that comes up and repeats itself, well, hopefully you've already asked who does this belong to and let it go and returned it to sender. Um, but if you have something that keeps repeating, use the access consciousness clearing statement on it. All you do, once that energy comes up, you go, okay, everything that allows that to exist, I now destroy and uncreate it. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. 
And if it comes up again, everything that allows it to exist, I now destroy and create it. Right, wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. As many times as it takes. Now the first five or 10 times, it may feel like it's not changing anything, but after a few more times, you'll start to notice that you'll be able to catch it even sooner when it comes up before it feels real to you and something you have to react to. And then after a while, it won't come up anymore. I've used this on some of the toughest stuff in the world, in my world, that I didn't know how to change. And I would love to say that I have never had difficulties or fixed points of view or anything. <laughs> oh no, the reason I'm so happy is because I use these tools, which is why I'm giving you this reminder again, please use these tools. They're, the the whole thing about it is, it's, yeah, I don't even know how to, to put it into your world other than to say that if you use these tools, you can feel different on a daily basis. And that doesn't mean everything is always gonna go up in roses. What I've noticed is, as people use access tools, the level of their life where it was down here, it comes up to here, you know, starts elevating really fast usually, which means more lightness, more happiness, that sort of thing, more liking themselves, more feeling like they can create, more feeling like Corona ain't getting them down because nobody puts baby in a corner. And so their life goes up and we all have downs in our life, okay? but. Whereas before the down was like down here, now what happens is the down is like this and then you start using the tools and actually what used to be a down is actually you getting to some awareness, some way that you needed to be different in order for things to truly work and then you find that difference because you're the one who knows. You don't need anybody else, you're the one who knows and then it starts going up again. So the general level is like this and you'll have dips but they're not nearly as low. So. I'm saying that to, to implore you, to invite you, to cajole you, to do whatever the heck it takes to get you to start using some of these tools, please. Because once again, it's like if you're a carpenter and you want to build a house, but you're not willing to pull any of the tools out of the toolbox, um, you're going to stand there with a lot of lumber and nails and materials and nothing is going to get created that's greater than what you already have. Same thing with access consciousness tools. You're basically a carpenter of consciousness. <laughs> I like that, but that was a little weird. Anyway, so, um, so we got in a few things. And then um, another one you want to use is interesting point of view. I have this point of view. You want to lower all of your walls and barriers and you can practice this right now. Get something that's come up that you still feel a little stuck or yuck about. Still sort of a weird energy in your world and just go to that energy, whatever it is, just sense it and go, interesting point of view, I have this point of view. Huh. It's a changing already. And again, interesting point of view, I have this point of view. Changes more. Interesting point of view, I have this point of view. Interesting point of view, I have this point of view. Interesting point of view, I have this point of view. Huh. Just within about five times things change. Uh, it's an amazing tool, as are all of these. And you get so many, so many, so many tools if you do an access consciousness class or read a book or what have you, that it can seem really overwhelming or confusing. So one of the things I would also suggest, um, new or old, although your list is going to be a lot longer if you've been doing access longer, is write down a list of resources. So one list if you're, especially if you're new, probably, I don't know. When I say new, I don't even know what that means. Newer to access, newer to, you know, this, uh, this awareness that you truly can change things, even when the rest of the world is like, ah, going to hell in a handbasket from their point of view. Um, so what I would do is I'd write down a list of uh, tools, yeah, from access and whatever else you have, okay? that are like, okay, pock and pod, or who does this belong to, or interesting point of view, or ask a question, or what's right about me I'm not getting, or maybe it's a list of a ton of questions that you can ask, and then a list of resources, period, like the things that you know that make you lighter when you do them, maybe a person that you call and you always get happier afterwards, or getting a massage, or going for a run, or um, I don't know, writing on your book, or whatever it is and get a list of those resources too. Put those in notes along with your gratitude one. Find a way to pin that darn note to the top of your notes on your phone if that's how you operate. Some of you may actually use pen and paper or something like that. Whoa! 
or a computer, whatever, it doesn't matter. But the reason I say that is because in the middle of ah, or in the middle of eh, we usually don't think about what we can use to get out of it. We usually feel really stuck with it. And um, you, if you open that note and you go, okay, what do I require to change this? And you'll go to the weirdest thing. You'll look at that and go, really? I need to ask that question? Okay, and you'll start asking that question and things will change. Well, why? Because you know. You're so friggin' brilliant that you know what it's gonna take to change stuff. How does it get any better than that? That's friggin' awesome. So that's when people said you're annoying, annoying, and you, what they really probably meant was you're annoying, but they didn't know how to put it into words. Okay, so this has been a rather dynamically long video, but what I was hoping to do with this video is many, many, many things. Um, give you sort of a, a, a um, an access consciousness primer or primer as it were, you know, to remind you of what you may already know. And if you don't, well, um, now you do, or at least we're beginning, right? But also to sort of be with you for a few minutes to shift your vibe and change the energy. Because I got to tell you, sometimes it's really nice to be around someone and be in the energy of somebody who's like, you're not wrong, my beautiful friend. You are an amazing gift of this world. And just being in that energy can be an amazing gift. I ask people in classes, how many people in your life do you have that don't judge you? And I say, raise your hand if you have at least one person in your life that doesn't judge you. And when people raise their hands and I go, okay, so what's it like being around that person? Sometimes just five minutes in their presence can change your whole outlook, your whole perspective. Well, that's part of what I was hoping to do with you today without actually explicitly stating it up front so we could be it and then talk about it at the end so you could actually have an experience of it. So if this video has been a contribution, please, 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 please like and subscribe. That would be awesome. But if it's been a contribution, write this down, mark it down, maybe put it on your list of resources. And uh, please recognize that my life was very much like a lot of people are experiencing with COVID right now, 20 years ago. Now I'm ex living on this planet while COVID is going on as you are. And um, I do have ups and downs, but things for the most part have a sense of peace. They have a sense of ease, and I've got a sense that things are going to be getting far greater. So what can you choose right now that will allow your life to get far greater also? See, I don't, I like the way I'm wired is like, let's be greater together, okay? And if I can contribute, that's why I'm here. So what can you choose that will allow your life to be far greater too? Because you can look at anybody in basically two different ways, let's say. You can look at what somebody else is choosing and being, <clears throat> and you can go, oh, well, I'll never have that. Or you could look at what somebody's choosing and being and go, if they're having it, I could have it too. And what if you didn't have to take it from them to get it? What if you could choose it on your terms, create it for you, but also for everybody who will be inspired by you? Everything that doesn't allow you to perceive, know, be, and receive that, will you destroy and uncreate it, please? Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. Okay, my beautiful friends, this has been officially the longest tour of consciousness ever so far. Thank you, Corona. I don't know if this thing is going to make it in its entirety to the tour of consciousness, but if it does, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being part of the tour of consciousness. Thank you for all of the gratitude that you send me. That truly is the wind beneath my wings. And let's do this fucking thing together. You truly are not alone, my beautiful friend. And there is a different world to be created and a different choice for you, many different choices for you than you ever thought possible. All you gotta do is use some of the tools to get rid of the fixed crap and fixed points of view so that you can perceive that those choices are available for you also. And on that note, what if you truly being you are the gift, 
the change and the possibility this world requires. I very much look forward to seeing you in person someday and having a hug. See you soon, beautiful people. Bye-bye.